Thank you, my Lord, I'm indebted. Uh, Brigadier, now, just to tie up that point that we were engaging on before the break, are there any witness statements that say they saw suspects running away from the crime scene, that is, the Kumalo household? Yes, I, I think there is, my lord, but one will have to go through the first volume to be specific so that I can, we can go through them we, we, we can, and we can, we can share them. I can share them. Uh, and, but and I have a recollection of, um, I think the Nashes or saying something to that effect, my lord. And, and the late Mr. Mukite as well, the one that we spoke about, I think he does talk about someone running away as well. Mr. Um, Makalin, sorry, the deceased, the one, Makalin, the one who assisted with the drafting of the ID kit for the second <coughs> suspect. Did those witnesses specifically say or said, I saw suspects running away from 13511 Kutlanong Street, Nzamo section, Fosloras on the 26th of October 2014 from between 2000 hours and 21:15 in the evening no there's not there's not even a single witness that says that including the people in who were in the house my lord yes. they don't explain it in that context yes. they, no there's no one who puts it specifically like that uh, so what are those witnesses that you say you can check? What are they saying? <coughs> My Lord, I, th I think so that one does not misquote them. If I can be given yes. an opportunity, I think, I yes, think I'm, we I'm, can embark on that exercise. Yes. But my recollection is like, um, you'll have inference like saying Makumalo's house or Kelly's house, you know, that's how they describe the yes, crime scene. Yes, but I want that. Yes, yeah, but, but there's, I don't <coughs> think there's even a single one in my mind that I recall that identifies the house in terms of the house number no, yes. and the time. Yeah, the I, hence I said, uh, in a generic form, mm. uh, the crime scene. Yes, no, in a generic, in a generic form, my lord, I think, I think we may find those statements. I'll just have to be given an opportunity. So I'll, that, I'll, uh, I'll give you that opportunity so that uh, during the long agenda, then we can revert to it after the long agenda. Okay, man. Now, you, you will recall as well that before these particular accused persons were arrested, a Mr. Mbata was arrested for this matter, and an identity parade was conducted in that uh, for 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 that uh, suspect. You call that? I do recall, my lord. Uzo kumbula ge ukuti ge ngapambi ukuti lava ba solo lava pambi ngando lo manje ba bo shwe guno mlesa ge utize umbata owa bo shwa futi ge guno ID parade e yenzwa ge yabonga kumbula lo. And in this instance, uh, specifically regarding accused number two after his arrest on the 16th of June 2020, uh, why was an identity parade not conducted for him in respect of the people that were in the house? M my Lord, I do recall specific in two instances the two people that I interviewed, and that is Mr. Mtogozi um, Sitwala. Um, and Mr. Matala, who said they were 50 50. I think they put it in that context that they are not 100% sure that they will be able to do an identification parade. And I think I took their statements because I know they put it in the middle. So it, 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 it wasn't going to take us anywhere. Insofar as the others, um, as I've said, my lord, um, the investigation was prosecutorial driven. You sit with the prosecution and you're guided as to which witnesses you can use or not. But those two specifically, I interviewed them. Um, and they gave a statement to say it's, 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 
they're, they're not they're not hundred percent sure it's fifty fifty. I think that's how the statement is quoted. Manjege Uma Eboshua Gam Solo was feeling as if sixteenth got June twenty twenty Wabunga Nige again I ID parity in a bikonage and a kumbulage um tobozisi uh twala gany na yeg u tumelo madala footigni chat mende zaboge in I pala malana logo basho ge ubutige umangen zwaga banas conservo so gutige banga wazige ukuthi bakhombeke basho ukuthi ilonake ngokumayela nabanye ke ngishilo ukuthi ke uphenyoke uphenyo olaluhola noma khulunyisana nabeshushisike kodwa bona abo babili labo basho kanjalo now regarding the rest of the people that were in the house uh, what decision and why was it taken that an id parade they shouldn't come to an identity parade where accused number two will be part of the people that are in the lineup so that they can have an independent identification should they identify him at that point rather than what transpired here in court, him being uh, identified from the dog. My Lord, like I said, um, the first part, like I said, the two witnesses that I interviewed said they were not 100% certain. So they didn't rule out the possibility, but they also could not confirm that they will be able to identify the accused because of the period that it has taken. And as such, as I said, my Lord, I took statements to that effect. Um, the other, as I said, it was procedural driven investigation. Um, there were guidelines and given as to who we can use and who we cannot use. Um, um, that, that's, that's how far I can answer it now. Manjega Mukmala Nabanya, Gabunga, Bamkombe, Bela, and Cantolo, Besen, Shilog, Utila, Babi Bonage, Basho, Babanga, Tonsegis, Utibanga, Comba, Noma Banga Combi, or Tabasho, you put Abana, and you can sell so Banga, was good Bagwenzelo. Abanyege of Fagazi, the same Shilo Futige, Ugutige, a Babu, Proper Sanagan, Mukumi Sanagan, and the Shushi Sige, Shua Gutu Ban is number seven Zis or Ban is number seven Zis. Now, if I may assist you, one of these statements uh, is A126, and you can find one for yourself. I think A126 is in respect of Tumelo Madala, whom you took a statement from inquiring whether or not he will still be able to identify the perpetrators. And he said that this case has been a, a while back, the incident happening. Therefore, he was uh, equivocal in other ways. He wasn't sure that he will be a, a, a able to identify the persons that had allegedly entered the house on the 26th of October 2014. Yes, my lord, that's why I'm saying Tumelo Madala do recall, but it didn't say he will not be able to. It was just a middle line to say because of the time period, like you phrasing it, is is not certain. It was a 50 50 type of uh, um, um, response that he gave, my lord. Yabo Tumelo Madala and Yakun Yakun Bula and Ajaba and Tatu Bushoge, Kota Gai, Begam and Galen Delage, Uber and Bayoga, was sure of putting Gang Mayes Kati. <laughs> okay. Now, let's go back to the issue of the identity kit. We have seen Exhibit BB, uh, which is the identity kit that was compiled on the 29th of uh, October 2014. Did, yes, you, did you subsequent to that request the warrant officer still come to compile another identity kit with, uh, regarding accused number two, yes. altering the image now that is exhibit BB? No, no, no. So, so, so the question is twofold, my lord. The first part, yes, I did contact um, warrant officer still come to assist um, with the photo that I had of accused two who was arrested. Mm. The second part, not to alter the initial identity kit. It mm. was to say, this is the picture. If I recall, I think the picture was either coming from the identity document after yes. accused two was, was, was arrested, my lord. And I asked her if she can take this picture and see if this picture, um, and if she puts a wood on accused two, 
will it not be closely resemble the picture or the identity kit that was crafted on the 29th of October um, 2014. So, so that was that, but not to replace or alter. So we have two submissions. There's this identity kit of, 20, of the 29th of October 2014. And when I ask her to assist with what I had in seeing that we can see similarities or not from her expertise, my lord. That's how I ask her. Uh, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> the, the, es okay, okay. the essence of that request, my lord, was to try and, and ascertain from her whether she can link this photo that we've given to her when the hoodie is inserted with the photo that was um, crafted or drawn on the 29th of um, um, October 2014, my lord. Now, your index number will be A154. A154? Yes. My lord, uh, A154 is another report by Warrant Officer Stilcom, Amanda Stilcom, who is the face, facial image analyst who also compiled the initial uh, identity kit exhibit J from which exhibit BB was extracted. My lord. And with leave of the court, my lord, once the brigadier has obtained the relevant document from his docket, I beg leave to take him through. Yes, my lord, I do have 154, A154. Okay. <clears throat> Now this report was commissioned on the 19th of June 2020 in East London. Uh, if you can assist me, uh, Colonel, by going to the commissioning part who the commissioner was, and the deponent is Amanda Yvonne Stenkamp. Yes, I, I don't know this person, but it's someone from East London. It's um, A. Labes. Stuff look like that, uh, my lord. Um, Strach. Strach. It's Petros. Paulos. Paulos. Um, Engel. Klobelar. Klobelar, yes. Klobelar, okay. he's a lieutenant colonel. Okay. I'm not sure if you have a good boy who was East London Commission of Oath. Petros Paulos Klobelar, lieutenant colonel. Yes, my lord. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go through this brigadier and there may have to be a time when we revisit it again because I forgot in the morning to give it to my learned colleague so that he can scan it so that uh, the accused person, accused two in particular, could also view uh, this identity kit as you are, you are, you are, you are commenting on it. but. I have already consulted with him regarding that he's aware of this new identity kit. And by new, I'm saying subsequent to the one of the 29th of October 2014. Correct. Understood, my lord. And at page, uh, there's no page number, but the second page will be, and I read, Fosfor Raskas 63610 of 2014. Uh, Hereby, I, Amanda Yvonne 
Sebastian Kamp under oath in English, paragraph one, occupation and position in the South African police. I am a warrant officer in the South African police force number stationed at the facial identification unit at the, at the local criminal record center in East London, where I am employed as a facial identification specialist with telephone number. Qualifications and experience, I have 28 years service in the South African Police. I am employed as a facial identification specialist at the South African Police facial identification section since 1997. The functions I perform on a daily basis include the following. Facial compilations, facial comparisons, facial mappings, two-dimensional facial reconstructions of decomposed bodies, and facial aging. I receive training the facial identification functions at the CRC <coughs> Training Center in Pretoria and facial identification expert uh, status during 1998. I also gave presentation regarding facial comparisons and facial comparisons at the facial comparison symposium hosted at the School of uh, Anatomical Science University of the Vetvatesrand on the 1st of March 2015. During 7 August to 13 September 2006, I gave evidence in the South Houghton in the following cases: the state of the case of uh, State versus M. Koza and four others, a medal draft case. Sorry, why are you reciting all that? Yes. So, my Lord, let me go to the relevant part, uh, which is I'll skip paragraph three that it should be mutatis um, mutandis with the paragraph, same paragraph in Exhibit J. The relevant paragraph is in paragraph 4 on 16 June 2020. I received a request from Colonel Gininda to do an alteration on an image by adding a hoodie and dreadlocks hairstyle to a person of interest. I performed the alteration using Adobe Photoshop C. Is it C52 or CS2? by adding dreadlocks hairstyle and hoodie with a brush tool. Attached, please find an extra A, the draft document in brackets, that forms part of this affidavit, uh, containing identity kits and control images. Paragraph five is the commissioning that we have just referred to. And then page one, an extra A, it reads, Phosphorus cast 636-10-2014, a facial composite is a method of establishing a visual likeness of any person through the verbal description of a witness or victim, and which is built up with the aid of identity equipment by a facial technician. The facial description must be established as well as the modus operandi of the sort person to aid the, in the facial investigation. And it says, Annexure A is a draft document for investigation purposes. Page two is the suspect information of a person of interest. And page three is the identity key control and altered image. And page two thereof, it's Fosco Raskas 636 uh, Mr. Makanini, residing at Mzamo 3942, compiled the face of suspect B. He saw three unknown African males in the vicinity of the gas station busy on their cell phones. Later, they saw uh, them outside the house of uh, Kumalos. He saw the suspect B at the gate and gave the following description. Plus minus 25 years old, plus minus 1.80 meter tall, slender build, a golden insert in upper teeth, not, not sure in brackets regarding the golden insert in upper teeth. Uh, uh, dreadlocks has style, facial hair, mustache, and beard. He saw something in his hand that not sure if it was a firearm. Witness could not compile the other faces. And there's an explanatory with second suspect identity kit, unknown African male, plus minus 25 years old, slender build, height, plus minus 180 meter, meter tall, medium brown complexion, upper teeth, so a golden in the in upper teeth, not sure which side, 
prominent cheekbones, dreadlock, hairstyle, facial hair. And then, as you correctly say, Brigadier, uh, the control image that was used, uh, there, there are three images. Uh, the first on the left is the image that is of the image on the left in exhibit J. And the two, the one in the middle, is the actual uh, photo of uh, the an, an extract from uh, I choose number two's ID, and, and then I think the last image is the one where it was now superimposed or altered using a hoodie. Correct, my lord. Uh, and there's also this other one. Do you have it in front of you? I think I. Um, let me just confirm a lot. Um, I, I have something like that, but it's just that the wording is written differently. But I do have something to this effect, yeah. similar to what you have, but I think it's the writing that is slightly different. Yeah, because this one is an enlarged of okay. this page. And okay. no, it says then. this suspect was standing outside the gate and the descriptors are the same as in the pages that I've read. Yes, I, I'm not sure if... Let me see. I just don't see the way that you've seen, but the picture, yes, there is a picture resembling um, okay. what I was shown, my lord. Yes, like, like I'm saying, this exercise is, gonna, is going to be futile if it's not been there so that there's no repetition when uh, I ask you to comment on it. I was just placing it on record so that when it's placed there, I've already placed it on record. So I'm going to request that also this one could be done after lunch. I'll ask my learned colleague to scan it for us so that it can be built. Understood. Now, the questions that I can ask from this, whether or not we're gonna build this, is what was the necessity of having this second identification uh, altered from DB to this other one now with an, a control image of his identification uh, document used. So, so my Lord, th there was no intention to alter. It was to compare. So, so that is the right context. The alteration is insofar as what was provided to warrant officer all didn't come and the altering she's talking about is what we provided to her to put the hoodie and the dreadlocks as is described by Mr. McAllen in order for her expertise. As I said, my lord, the purpose was to see if she can say photo B or the sample that we gave her corresponds with the identity that was taken on the 29th of um, October 2014. That was the purpose, to say you are an expert, you dealt with this identity on the 29th of October 2014, Here's the picture which does not have a dreadlocks of a person of interest. Can you then alter this picture that we are sending and add the hoodie and the dreadlocks and see if you can match the two? That was the purpose of this exercise. But not to alter the original identity kit of 2014 because the comparison was being done in relation to that original identity kit, my lord. In the case of the case of the 2014. So the purpose, in essence, my lord, was to try and see if we can link conclusively accused to um, as per the photo that comes from this ID with the identity kit that was drawn 
on the 29th of October 2014. That was the purpose. In close, we will be able to get the money 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 to get or exclude him if, for example, the expect says no. There's no, there's no, there's no such in terms of uh, her expectations, my lord. No mage uma ungo di etige ka ulo kuge sengwen zilege lok kota genya tola no mage abona ge uguti ka aklangan besege eya kishwa ge a uguti nje aklangani sokota uma go uguti agu koptola gala yo a kishwa. Where was accused number two's uh, identification document taken for it to be supplied to Miss Denegan? It was taken by the arresting officers. As, as I said, when they arrested him on the set date, my lord, they did let me know. So it was electronically communicated as Warrant Officer Stain Camp was sitting in the Western, not the Western, the Eastern Cape. East London, sorry, in East London, my lord. Uh, 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 and other than Makalini and whom we've established now that he's not the person that was in the house, is there any other person that made a statement to the effect that the second intruder wearing a hoodie also had dreadlocks because the description of dreadlocks for, from the people in the house only related to the first intruder. That is correct. The, all the people in the house relate to the first intruder with the dreadlocks. Mm -hmm. that's, that's okay. That's, that's what it says. I agree with yes, you. Yes, but my we question is... We have to ask you 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 Yes, but my question is this. Other than Mark and Lenny, that we know that he was not in the house, are there any other witnesses that describe the person that they saw running wearing a hoodie having a dreadlocks hairstyle? Malota may speak under correction, but I seem to recall that the statement we dealt with before tea time, um, um, often Tabisane, um, or the record, Maybe say maybe saying something to that effect, but, but I'm not sure, my lord. All all I can say with certainty is that the people who were in the house only describe the first intruder with dreadlocks, and they don't say the second one had dreadlocks. I mean, had uh, dreadlocks and a hoodie. That's that's what I can say with certainty. In so far as to whether there are other witnesses outside, one will have to be um, have an opportunity to go through all the um, witness statements um, and then give a certain answer, so that I don't seem to be saying something that contradicts the docket, my lord. Ngapanje wa ke umakele ni ingaba bakona yi ni abanyege gulabaga ababe ngapanje ge abashoyo namage abakaza ngalende lage umakele ni amkaze ngayoge ugutige lomunte waifage ihuguti wa ina matelet loks laba ababe sentin bona ke umabe kaza ge bakaza lo owange na kaza kutuwe ni na matelet loks kutu wage gulaba ababe ngapanje ge kuzo fanyo lomunte ge apege ge manje ge zona zonke itatmende ge ngashoge into enga hamelani na logo ogui palo glona ito now, uh, Ms. Zandile Kumalo and Lieutenant Kendall Mangela testified about a reenactment that occurred around 2016 uh, regarding the events that transpired on the 26th of October of te, uh, 2014. Are you aware of that uh, reconstruction that was uh, conducted? That was before you even uh, were seized with this matter. Um, the, the only the only construction, and I don't know if, if I assume I'm, I'm assuming my lot, and I stand under correction. Yes. The, the only thing that I seems to recall. It's where General Mokotedi and I think with Brigadier Mudise were involved, where they use actors to try and reconstruct the scene. I'm not sure if that, uh, that's the one I'm that's about. the one I'm referring to. Yeah, yeah, I have a recollection of that moment. Ngiyakumbula ke noma ke in noma umbuzo ke ubuti ke ngo 2016 gula kona ke kwa kuyopeba noma ke kuyosela kuyogwenzwa ke kabusha noma ke ukuti konstructor 
yonake indawo yesigameke ngaba uyazini ke ngalokho mayela nesigameke lesa senzeka ngaso i26 October 2014 engikhumbu layo ukuthi kwa ku General Mokotedi kanye naye ke ubrigadier Mudise ngiyazi ukuthi ke basebenzisa ke ama hectares yebo ilokho ebengikhuluma ngako and the gist of Ms Kumalo's testimony is andile is that they were called to 13511 Kutlano Street, Muzamo section for Slorass on that day. And uh, using props, like you say, sort of an acting out and reenactment of that scene, each person that was in the house in 2014 was called in to say, we've set up the scene, say this thing is senso, this one is there in two, and explain how it transpired. But the gist of what, why I'm asking you this is, initially, I think at the beginning of the year, or even last year already, I had asked the state to provide us with a copy of the DVD of that reenactment re because I have a statement of a warrant officer, Boisen, who says he also attended that reenactment. He took videography of that reenactment copied it into an SD card and later made into DVD. And I haven't had the benefit of a positive response whether or not that DVD is still available. My Lord, I, I, I'll assist. I suppose then the defense wants to have access to that DVD, so I can, I, I'll can. i assist. I'll try to go through the electronic data that we receive with the docket um, when I sign for it and, and, and and identify it and, and make it available to the defense. So I just have to go through um, um, the electronic data, my lot that was given to us. And in a legal legal up on Java Usho, good work no warrant officer poison, put in a year, go again, nage, a way in trouble looking at the low and a little was a one DVD, the funny good thing in your pega, I get Uma, the legal leg, good to get Guinegas and I will DVD lay. That will be greatly appreciated, Brigadier. No, I'll do my best, my lot. Now, uh, yesterday, because we were going up and down, we were, I left then, when we were talking about the incident of the 18th of, we had we spoken about the incident of the 17th of June 2020 at the bottom in Pretoria North, where accused number two instructs me that you were present and you say you are not present, that will be something that will be added and what transpired in the boardroom. Then on the 18th, you go to Caltonville at Sibanya Gold, where accused number two was employed, and you said primarily to check on his alibi that he was at work at the time the incident took place. Is that correct? That, that is correct, my lord, absolutely. But also just to go back on the date of the 17th, my lord, um, I seem to recall that it was said, I asked accused two to take off his clothing, I'm not so sure whether the yes. top part to check for tattoos. Yes. The, my lord, um, there will be no reason to do that because there is no statement in the docket. And that's why I said I was not there. But, but, but even if I parked it, in the docket itself, there's no statement by either the people who are in the house or outside who gave a description of tattoos. So, 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 so that exercise, even if I was present, I wouldn't ask him to do that because there's no description that is given that the second suspect or even the, se the first suspect had tattoos. You can just, the description in terms of the dreadlocks, the clothing goes in so far as that, but no description of tattoos was given, my lord. Basically, uh, the 18th June, 2020 was a we were connected a Caltonville a Sibanye we were going to say that 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 we were going to say
thank you, my lord. I mean, that's it. Now, accused number two, you stated that you then confronted accused number two with a copy of the identity kit exhibit BB, and you informed him that the person on the left with a hoodie uh, bore a resemblance to him, right? Yes, according to my observation. So I was basing that on my observation, my lord. Yeah, but the Omanga again, I am solo speeding, it together, Mut and Gimbona Lana, or Grace is Tom Bestuji, when the mother identified a Ofan and Awaga logo, Babu, Iloko, and Angi born, I mean. And further that, you then confronted him and said, I'm sitting with information that shows me that you are a person of interest or a suspect in the Senzo Mewa murder case, right? Yes, I did, but that's not how the sequence is correct. But I think this, the sequencing is not accurate, my lord. That was put at the beginning, after he was warned according to his rights, and that the, this assertion that he was, a, I'm sitting with information that he may be involved in the murder of Senzo Meiwa, that was put at the beginning. Mm. Subsequent to that, then a response was given to me, my lord, that no, he was not there. And I even alluded to the fact that, my lord, it was interesting to me, or I found it um, um, interesting in that he was able to specify the specific date of this incident, the 26th of October 2014, that he was at work. And then subsequently then we followed that alibi which was found to be false. So that is that is the sequence that I'm, I'm laying. Thereafter, after the alibi was then denied, then the identity kit then kicks in, in terms of saying my view relating to the identity kit, which was also denied by accused number two in terms of um, um, him saying it's a mistaken identity. That, that, that's how it unfolded, my lord, leading to the identity uh, confrontation. I was asked and responded that it's mistaken. you then up attended upon two areas, one at human resources to find the clocking records and other related documents regarding the status of whether or not accused number two was working first and whether he was at, at work on the 26th of October 2014, correct? Um, I, I'm not, I, I don't recall, my lord, that it was two places. It was one facility, yes. and Mr. Mulder, yeah, and Mr. Mulder was having access to, 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 the, to the history in terms of the activities regarding accused two on the specific date we're inquiring about and the activities of the clocking record. That will, one will see that, my lord, that on the 22nd, when we finalize his affidavit, his affidavit contains the clocking record of, of his movement around this period, my lord. So it was Mr. Mulder who actually uh, was able to gain us access to those activities. Yes, when I say uh you went to two uh, separate departments at uh, Sibanya Gold. Didn't you also attend to the hospital section also to obtain uh, medical records uh, for whatever purposes your investigation directed you to? No, I, I don't recall that, my lord. The, 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 the examination where I was present when accused two was examined was on the 22nd after he made appearances um, on, on the charge of um, um, possession in in, 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 in in northwest and subsequently then i think we went to dr talkway um that's that's my recollection um, and that is where the dental report was given 
now, just touching on that one, then we'll continue with this aspect of uh, the visit to uh, Sibanya Gold. Uh, the issue of the golden tooth, where accused to is now taken to Dr. Sokwe. Other than Makaleni, the witnesses in the house who describe a second intruder as tall, dark, wearing a hoodie, did they also describe that that intruder had a golden insect on his teeth? No. My recollection, my lord, is that there may be one statement that identifies the first intruder as, as having a gold tooth. But then I think that statement was then supplemented by that person, I think, saying he's not sure. I think it could be um, Ms. Sandy Kumalo, but I stand under correction. But I can also, after lunch, be specific, my lord. But there is a statement to that effect, but it refers to the first intruder. That is, insofar as the people who were inside the house. Uh, Okay, now let's revert back to uh, Caltenville. Accused number two, it strikes me that at Caltenville, indeed, he led the investigative team to his shaft where he went and talking records and other HR related documents were obtained. And thereafter he was taken to the hospital section because there was an issue to check whether the accused had had an injury during a mining accident that the investigative team wanted to follow. And if also I'm correct, Sergeant Mohani testified to that effect that accused two was taken to the hospital section of the mining complex for that purpose. My Lord, um, if he was taken, if, and if Sergeant Mohani testified to that effect, it would have been before I arrived. When I arrived, as I said, my Lord, the sequence of events were exactly as to where he was. Alibi followed, um, found to be false, identikit, which was then denied by him. I warned him according to his rights. Then as I was leaving, um, I was then called back by one of the members, and that led now to the confession, my lord. And, and, and after we had agreed that he is prepared to make a statement to an independent police officer, I departed with Sergeant Mohula. So there was no other activities where I went to attend to with accused number two. The only um, encounter that I had with him, insofar as the medical section is concerned, it's with the doctor, this doctor talk on the 22nd, that was the following Monday um, of June 2020, my lord. Okay. 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 Now, with respect to now that aspect of you arranging that uh, a statement be ta obtained from accused number two because he had made certain utterances. Uh, accused number two will testify, and he has already said in the trial within the trial, that at Sibanye Gold, you did not confront him with Exhibit BB, the identity kit, but rather you uh, uh, confronted him with uh, a photo that is part of Exhibit uh, S that will be 
photo 47, which depicts a red motor vehicle with persons around. And in the background, on the other side of the car, there is a person wearing blue clothing with a cap. No, that's absolutely not correct, my lord. My lord, and I think I dealt with this part yesterday, um, when I was dealing with the issue of the see-through bag. The downloads, um, um, insofar, because, because what he's referring to is contained in the downloads of accused number three cell phone. That picture with the red car, it's a sedan, and there are people appearing there. That picture, my lord, was found in the downloads of accused number three. Now, I indicated that on the 16th, we were not inside of accused three, four, and five. It is after the confession of um, the 19th, and obviously him talking to me on the 18th and subsequently it being written down on the 19th and 24, that the analysis towards accused three in terms of the case number, the firearm that was seized from him, exhibits taken from him, were actually paid attention to. Now the statement from the downloader, this is now um, uh, Sergeant Mabasa, from Brixton, where the downloads of accused three were contained, was only made available or commissioned on the 17th of August, of August 2020. So I did not have, I could not have shown him, the essence of what I'm saying, my lord, I could not have shown him a photo that is contained in the downloads of accused three cell phone because I was not in possession of those downloads. The first group, the first data came to me around August 2017 when I received it from Subgen Mabaso. Then subsequently, then the analysis was done by um, Kenneth Stein. So that is not correct. I was not in possession of that picture. Absolutely. <laughs> Footage is that Mende, Engas told us that Umabasa, Oguyen, was a Brexit, Oguyen, Oenzalo, Madame Lusqua, Sangas Tola, Gay Seventeen Ziga Ocasti, twenty twenty. Nales was cut in less of the Kulumana, you saw the speedy, Lama downloads the Lago, Nangi, Gena. And my lord, I even said that is why it, I, had, I had no knowledge um, of this see through back when we went to interview Accused Three on the 30th of June because Accused, accused Three was interviewed and measured on the 30 of June 2020 because I did not have um, that see-through back picture and the linkages even when we went to interview him. So on the 17th or 18th rather when I came across accused I had no access to, to the downloads in that picture. Put you again, Angel Mobage, interview Nomage in Tolo Honing, I and I am solo with Tatu and Gate Pate is June 2020. A book on Nana Kuluma Naya, my Lanalisa, Nalida Saga Gedal Nemali, Lady Albona Galayo, Bonayo, a Pagatron, Uti Nani, Gobage Lama downloads Lao Nangi Genau. Uh, which would in Gazo E. Eighteen's got June twenty twenty Mankuluma, I am solo with Speedy. Lama downloads Lao Nangi Genau. No matter what you told me, let's Nangi Genau. Let me just correct myself, uh, because I choose to as just mouth to me to say, in fact, it was not at uh, Caltenville when you confronted him with this photograph. Mm -hmm. It was at Pretoria North SAPS on the 17th of June 2020 in the boardroom. And he says specifically that it is you who showed, who showed him this picture with the person in the background with a cap with insignia that I cannot see that is slightly bent to say this person is accused number two. No, but my lord, that's, that's, that, that, that's misleading. That's not correct. The same explanation I gave applies to the 17th of June. As I said, the only time the name of accused three came into our picture was on the 18th, not even on the 17th, because I didn't see the accused on the 16th, accused two. I didn't see him on the 16th. I didn't see him on the 17th. The only time I came 
across Accus 2 for the first time was the 18th. So there is no way I would have shown him this picture on the 17th because it was not even in the po in possession of this team. We're not even aware because Accus 3 was not on site as, as part of the persons of interest. So it's, it's, it's not true, my lord. Absolutely, <laughs> now on this particular picture, uh, photo 47 of Exhibit S, during Constable Zungu's evidence, uh, he was also led by my learned colleague, Advocate Baloi, regarding this picture. And his testimony was on the 7th of September 2023, and it will be at page 10. And it will be the, part, the, the specific section that I want to go to is line 19 of page 10 going on to page 11. Uh, up to the top of page 12. <clears throat> yes, my lord. My lord, just to add on, to qualify what I was referring to with regard to the events of August. Now, in the statement which, which, which was discovered to the defense, A194, is the statement of Sergeant Mabasa, the downloader. Yes. Paragraph 5, my lord. In fact, even on this date, he was still doing the downloads. Paragraph 5 of A194 reads as follows, my lord. On 2020-08-17, at about 11.17, I receive a CD from the phone downloads office with a computer folder marked Devland Case 9622015. This is the case, my lord, when we're doing the analysis on Accused 3, we picked him up on. I testify about this. Containing a phone download information, the computer folder contained three X-ray files that contain the information of one phone one sim card and one memory card the information in the xry format cannot be tempered edited or manipulated paragraph six the information contained in xr xry file was as follows samsung gt e triple two zero cell phone number zero seven two seven six six eight one six nine this number my lord is the one that i said um we're able to link it to accused three to show that this was his downloads then there's email number 3597960502979902, IMSI 65501224915137, and a memory card that belongs to Mtobi C. Gardam Mube, suspect linked to Phosphorus 6361024014, as directed by Kenel Geninda. That is the essence of what I'm saying, my lord, that these activities regarding this only took place later in august so there is no way and this picture this picture that was displayed there my lord is contained here so on, in june i did not have access to this information it was only made to me available later so i could not have shown him this picture my lord <laughs> Gay 17th got August 2020 is cut by 11 17 got all the CD a guma phone downloader the office again a phone downloader yeah in a computer folder a macro Cleveland case 9602 2015 in a phone name one look download of a phone tiny foot here a computer folder lay in a my x-ray xry files I'm a tattoo I know the meaning one a phone a yacht I think that they are talking in the number that they are information information 
072 number 7668169 wase tazage ukuthi ke ileyo number leyo ke lesathola ke kuphenyo ukuthi kwabo inamba yakhe umsolo wesithathu we IMEI 35979605029702 kanye ne IMSI number kanye futhi ke ne memory card ekuyeka umthobisi gadla mncube umsolwa ehlanganiswa nenqala uforce lovers case 63610 2014 uthi ke lokho ke ngithola ke kuyena ubrigade yekininda besechaza ku brigade ukuthi ilokho ke engikushoyo ukuthi ke ngale sikhathi ikaphuluma ngaso umsolwa wesibili ngo June noma i17 ka June ke lokho ngange kabinako kuse kwatholakala kamuva and this statement my lord just to end the last part was then was made by sergeant Mabaso and commissioned on 2020 August the 17th at 1423, my lord. Same day. Uh, yes, 17th August. Well, he says he actually downloaded it. Yes, yes, same day, my lord. Um, uh, it, but, but it's August 2020. Yeah, yeah, 17. Same day, my lord, yes. What was this commission? 17th August 2020. Uh, my lord, it's uh, just gone one o'clock. Uh, is it an opportune time to take the lunch? Okay. Yes.